request for input from the commission. Uh, I thought that was a real positive thing. And uh, I, I have noted, I, it's, I'm compulsive. I look at the water level every day. And it's about three inches. It's already refilled about three inches. And I notice that you're not, uh, you're sort of, I think you letting it refill slowly. You're only drinking at about uh, 34 cubic uh, feet per second. Um, and so, uh, you know, I welcome that because many of you don't remember, but the big fights that we had here were those the lake level. In those days when we didn't have enough rain uh, and the water level was very low, the boating seasons were shortened, and uh, there was a big controversy. In the last couple of years, we had, if anything, a little too much rain. But you never know what's going to happen from, from day to day. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, again, I wanted to hear what you said, but I, I always felt that the yearly drawdowns were, were unnecessarily uh, more than they should be. And as a matter of fact, uh, the DEP agreed with me and you reduced it by four inches two years ago. I had, I had recommended that it be reduced, I think, by eight inches. Uh, my personal feeling is that uh, a reduction of 12 inches over the, the you know, regular years is enough. And so uh, I would like to see a refill continue and maybe be held at just 12 inches below until March 1st to get past any risk at all. So I, I, uh, that's, that's what I would favor. Again, uh, we voted to reduce the reduction and not everybody in this uh, commission is in favor of that but uh, it's, it's clear we, we uh, the only hard ice we had this winter was back about five weeks ago and when I said hard ice it really was only about an inch and a half or two inches thick and, and uh, uh, I only saw one fisherman out and it fell at the Luffy Carries out of the state park but I didn't venture on the ice at all which was the first of the so, so, so uh, I would, I would uh, first of all, uh, I'm very pleased that you consulted us. Secondly, I myself would recommend to the commission that we elaborate the refill till, till 12 inches and then the remainder after March 1st. Larry Morgan in the room, so, so he can attest to this. I can't tell you how many springs I was shin deep in water under the hoist up there at the boatyard, right? And that's because we had too much water in the spring. So now everybody wants to get it to come up quicker. Uh, the problem usually is we have high water mark in the spring, then we have a dry summer, and then it, it gets low at the end of uh, July, at the end of August. So uh, you know, I kind of go both ways with it. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously it's a, a, a DEP decision um, based on the rules right now, and that's the way it should be. But or I shouldn't say that's the way it should be, but that's the way it is. Um, but it's not it's not 100 one way or 100 the other way. There are there are arguments on both sides. I'll let you guys comment on that. Yeah, I want to hear okay. Sure. Yeah. What do you hear? So I would just say it's great that the state. Asking for input from the commission. And even if we can't all come to an agreement, that's really an appropriate role for the commission to provide it. But we don't own the damn control of the information that the DP does. But I think that's a positive thing. Um, I would, I, even if we go to all these meetings and hearing all the different opinions, I have no idea which is the right thing to do. I would lean on that. Princeton Hydro and the people that have a scientific basis for that. You know, we know the climate's changing. We know every year the lake's going to get more rain, or I, I feel that's going to be the case, and that's the trend. It's going to get more rain, it's going to get warmer. But even knowing that, I don't know how that affects that kind of decision, you know. Um, so 
we should have some discussions on that and provide some quality input. And I would ask Greg his, his opinion. <clears throat> You want me to provide me? Yeah. Yeah, let, let me, can I? Yeah. No, I just, I just wanted to, to say, you call on Fred, if you remember, Dan, at the, we had a meeting which will come up of the, the new uh, CAC, who's, uh, mm -hmm. which was formed to put input on the lake level plan going forward. And one of the things I asked is, uh, I've never heard a discussion about the, how the lake level affects hats. And uh, uh, you remember, may remember that. I, I, and Fred, can we ask Fred to comment on that now? What is no I'll take that. I'm going to go through their comments. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. okay, so I just checked uh, on my phone. The lake level was at 7.4 and uh, 34 cubic feet per second. Um, as I understand the current plan, um, the responsibility for the lake level falls on the Pocahontas Superintendent, Pocahontas State Park Superintendent, who is obviously with us tonight. Um, final decision is obviously hers. She has to obviously book her chain of command, and I do welcome the fact that she's soliciting input from this body. I think it's very important because I think all of us have a vested interest in helping give her as much information, background, and perspective as possible so that she makes an informed decision. That's critical, because I, I think we've seen instances, you know, in, in the history of, at least since I've been involved in this, some 20-some years, where the right decision hasn't always been made. Um, so it's important that she's seeking our advice, and I welcome that. Um, just a word about the annual drawdown. Um, my research that I have, the history that I have, going back to the 1930s, shows that the annual drawdown was originally 36 inches. Uh, the purpose was obviously to protect docks and um, shorefront structures from damage, and also um, to help fend off downstream flooding in the spring, packets down in areas along the river. So that 36-inch drawdown uh, was whittled to 30 inches, then 26 inches, and right now we are at 22 inches based on this pilot program. And the pilot program uh, was put into place to see if we could cheat this whole thing or a little bit further so that we didn't have that much of a distance to make up in the spring. Um, trouble is when this pilot program was started, um, ever since then we haven't had what I would consider a normal winter where we could have serious ice uh, formation, ice 18, 20 inches thick, ice creep and everything else that we see. And um, I did take note of um, Commissioner Stevens' comments. Um, I'm on the west shore. I don't get prevailing northwest early winds, but I do watch the white caps in the spring, and they are pretty high. And there is something to be said. We have a large sheet of ice, many acres in size, going across the lake when it breaks up in the spring. If the water level is lower, I think there's less damage than there would be if the water level is higher. So I think we need to be mindful of that. Um, I do have ice records, personally, going back to the 1980s. I've seen crazy things where ice has come in in December and left in mid-January. I have records, I think it was from the mid-1990s, where the ice came in right about this time. We have a sudden cold snap right now, and i never forget on my sister's birthday, which is March 21st, we were still really that year at the lake. So I have seen crazy stuff. I don't think we're going to see it this year looking out at the long-range forecast. But I do think every winter should be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. The decision as to when to close the gates is always an important decision. Normally, from my standpoint, that decision is when my 10-foot, 2-by-10 plank is too short for me to bridge the open water to get out ice fishing. After that, the ice is usually unsafe. When I get to that point, it's time to put the ice fishing equipment away and to raise the lake. Uh, unfortunately, there's no ice to walk on this year, so and there's no real prospect that I see in the next week, 10 days, where that's going to happen. And the days are getting longer. So I think it might make sense to go up to 8 feet and hold it there until March 1st and then, you know, play it from there. But I do think we have to be mindful. I think that's a good compromise. I mean, but it's specific to this year based upon current conditions. It doesn't mean next year you should do the same thing. So it has to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis, which is why I welcome this flexibility, because you need this flexibility out here. You can't look at a plan, a plan
plan is, is, is advisory. I think it's guidance it's for what works most of the time. But if you have an aberration, then the state park superintendent has to have the flexibility to adapt to current conditions and seek advice. So uh, I welcome those uh, comments. I do have other comments, Commissioner comments, which I'll hold. We're going to start. This is on this issue, right? And we're going to come back. Okay, it's totally related to this, so I don't want to take us out of it. It's about to happen. So. Okay, all right, then I'll keep going. <laughs> all right, so on Tuesday, the 28th of January, between 1 and 5 p.m., I attended uh, with some other people in this room the HAP Summit uh, up at the Pequest Hap Crowd Hatchery. It was put together um, by the DPP and it was chaired by Kerry Kirk Flu, obviously the president with the DPP and one of our former DPP reps here. It was very informative. She brought together lots of people from the state and some, some even a gentleman from college and um, um, Fred was there from Maryland. There's a gentleman that um, has a lot of lake experience and there's a lot of perspectives. There was people there from Greenwood Lake. A lot of information was shared and some interesting things that I took away from this. Uh, this, this limit of 20,000 for the, the half level when it's safe, unsafe, that triggering point. From what I understand, that the question came up, well, why was half of Greenwood Lake the safest swim in and the other half wasn't? Well, it's because our limit is our limit too low. Where does that number come from? Um, and it was said at meetings, I recall, that that is the best available science that they have to work with. That's what the DEP is done with it. It's the best available science for them. And that there's currently no federal standard which, which you know, would control or give them any further guidance. So it seems like uh, for now, they're going to stick with that. The other thing that was uh, of interest is, you know, they need to have their messaging a bit better, like just don't put like a pack on clothes on the highways and before you put a message out. And also, um, the Department of Health had representatives there, and they were kind of taking the task too because there was a big rollout of beach closed signs, beach closed. But there were times when the beaches were open, there was, you know, discussion that there needs to be an improved communication level when the beaches are reopened, not just when they're closed. So um, there's a lot of interesting uh, material that came up at this presentation. And the thought occurred to me while sitting here, uh, it would be nice if the DEP could you know, advance this discussion a little bit and present it to the public at um, maybe a high school, because every that's where we've had our HAB meetings in the past, everybody knows who that is, call a meeting in April and say, this is what we know, this is what we expect to come going forward. This is how we're going to handle it this summer. Just get out ahead of this, you know, or and not necessarily react, but be proactive. I suggested that to Carrie, and she said she was going to take that back to the powers that be and discuss it. I suggested that this could be held in conjunction with a special like a on commission meeting to be held at the high school where everybody is invited. So I guess we're waiting for the word from Carrie on, on whether that's uh, possible. I can't follow that. So, uh, <laughs> I agree with Fred. I'm thrilled that the DEP uh, came to us uh, for our opinion. Uh, different than it's been in the past. Uh, and I think we can gradually, my feeling, we can begin to gradually raise the lake to four inches of the uh, I don't see any ice in the future. Doesn't seem that way. I do have a question for Fred. Given the kind of winter we've had, how does that affect the lake? You know, once everyone uh, at the half gives their reports, I'll respond. I'm done. <coughs> My only comment is I agree with a lot of the commissioners here that um, uh, it should be done on a case by case basis. It's not set in stone every year. Uh, we look at long term weather conditions and patterns. Um, and I think the, the slow increase a little bit and then full blown in March. I mean, from now to March 1st is, is around the corner. And uh, I think, you know, before you, you look at our next meetings and people watch, and we're going to be discussing this before coming out then. So I think a little bit is fine. When Frederick mentioned um, that time when the lake didn't come up quick enough and we got our boats in late in the season, I think that was a couple of years ago now, like a five year drawdown. And it wasn't opened up quick enough. But since then, I haven't seen us have to fill up as quick, you know, have that problem again. Um, but I like the idea that we're looking at it and we don't have a problem. Uh, before I comment on the lake level, uh, just real quick, at the Morris County Reorganization meeting in January, um, I 
was officially appointed the Morris County rep. And Ryan Gilfillan is with us today, and he is going to be the alternate for Morris County. So uh, if you haven't met him, we meet him at the end of the meeting. Uh, say hello. Hi. Wait, welcome. 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 Thank you. Uh, Ryan will be the alternate. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Um, I don't think anybody's done more work uh, on lake level between Dan and Fred, so I value your opinion. You know, a lifelong resident too, I agree that um, it's, it's nice that the CEP's asking our opinion. Um, I like Fred's plan, you know, start bringing it up slowly. And um, I, I, I know I get long term, long range forecasts from uh, the weather service that Jefferson Township subscribes to. And basically, what everybody's saying is that I don't see a hard freeze coming forward through March. So um, it might be probably in our best interest to start bringing it up a little bit. So, well, I got. Well, I guess you got your answer. Hey, you no, just have to today. be. We have to. We'll get to the list of the You just have to be, you know, cautious, and so we have to, you know, play it by ear. So what I would ask is if the commission could respond as a whole to what you're doing. Okay, yeah. sir. And um, what I would respond to your comments is um, the idea was our staff looking at our weather pattern, consulted and felt, you know, based on the plan, the plan doesn't have an exact date as to when we start refill. And being that there was no ice, we felt why not try to get some of this water level going before yeah. if there's a freeze. Um, I remember there's been winters here in April, we still have snowstorms. So, you know, I'm very you might have to aware it. of the. You might have to open up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, I do keep all of that in mind because property damage is a concern. It's always a concern. Absolutely. So, we kind of balance Mother Nature with what we have, which is hard because we can't predict what she's going to do. But that's where our mindset is, and we wanted to get your opinion. It's, it's good because in the past year, if they were doing no, we can do this under control of the game. But it's good that you want to be comfortable and square the water together. That's great. And I like Fred's suggestion where, you know, we can build the point on the COVID that we can have property. Yeah, I'll just say, um, I, again, Fred, I think that's a good compromise, especially I, there are a couple of points I want to make. One is, when you look at all the climate models, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the mid Atlantic, Warmer and wetter, more precipitation. But in addition to that, um, what a lot of the models are showing is our winters are light in the, like, you know, uh, Christmas holiday snowstorm, it becomes rarer and rarer. But March can be a, is a wild card. Remember about three winters ago, we had a brutal March. And when you look at the models, they say that winter is going to start later and later. And they say March is really going to be sort of a wild card. That that, you know, we could be here a month later and it could be, you know, ice cold and there could be ice reforming. So again, I think that, that that approach is a good compromise. You know, keeping an eye on it, let it come up to a certain extent. Um, when you look at the extended forecast, you're right, very wet and warm, like in the 40s, down where, where I am, it, like over the weekend, it's 60 down around Philadelphia. So it's warmer and wetter. Um, so I would, I would suggest, I, 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 again, I like your approach. And um, just keep, if we were this, at this point in March, like Mar if we were at March 10th, I'd feel a little more comfortable and at ease. But March, again, is just such a, uh, it's a month that could be very light or it can be brutal, especially when you look at the models. So <clears throat> good approach. The question about apps. There's a lot of factors that come into play with that relative to drawdown. So when you do draw down, um, if you have wet weather, and we've had wet weather all through 2018 and through the spring of 2019, that flushes nutrients in. Um, if the water level is lower, you have more sunlight hitting sediments, it gets warmer, you don't have as much water leaving the water body, so the water stays there longer does have the potential to generate either more halves or more aquatic plant growth. The other thing too is we don't get, you know, when we get the ice and we have the snowpack, that really helps to reduce and kill off 
a lot of the plant vegetation, a lot of the halves, and we're not seeing that as much. So not only do we see situations where you have the potential to generate halves, but they're being generated earlier in the year. Um, I always use the example of Lake Mohawk. They have a real bad problem with curly leaf pond weed. Fifteen years ago, they used to get ice and snow, and the pond weed wouldn't start till April. There have been years where we see the pond weed growing in February. So that just gives the plants or the algae more of an opportunity to, to grow. So I think, again, bringing the water level up will, will certainly help uh, in terms of making sure you have that supply of water. At the same time, I think it's a good compromise uh, if a cold spell comes in. So if you're just in reference.